Moana Pacifica and the Rebels. So no new injuries report. Moana coming off the bye. The Rebels only won with Stacey Ely going off quite early with concussion last week. Uh, returning nothing from no nothing from no new players from either team um, unless Stacey Ely comes back from concussion. But we'll see how that goes. Um, Moana coming off the bye. Uh, look, they they look like they really were starting to get a bit of a you know roll on a bit of momentum with um, particularly with the likes of Levi Almua and Tava Tava Nawai, who just are the most destructive players and and the most valuable players in Super Rugby Pacific in 2023. But them just really combining really, really well. So my question is really just, um, you know, they they look to, I, I said earlier that the Moana has a very <clears throat> line out and they attack, they score most of their points off um, off a line out and chucking it into the backs, really just giving it to Tava Tava Nawai or Almua to truck it up. Um, I mean, how do the Rebels stop that? <laughs> I don't know how you get a handle on these guys. Like, what well, do you it's, it's, it's pretty tough. I, I think maybe we saw last week what the Rebels are going to try to do this week, whether they can do it week after week is a different story. But that immense line speed they had in D, um, the whole side really stepped up their physicality. Um, back into the game, they started falling off those tackles. I think in this matchup, if they come out firing with that same line speed, with that same physicality, they'll be able to kind of slow down those those moments where those two players sort of build that momentum for Moana. Um, you're not going to be able to tackle them first attempt every single time, but you'll be able to slow down their, their uh, impact. And I, I think if they can manage to do that through the first half, as both teams here uh, you know, are, are known to drop off in that last 20, it'll get them through. So um, the, the big thing for Moana is they let a lot of tries in. They defensively, they're up there probably with the Highlanders, uh, with, with the team that lets the most tries in and maybe the Waratahs last week. But the, the big thing is, yes, the physicality needs to be there for the Rebels, but what needs to change from Moana? Because week after week, they're leaking 40, 50, 60 points. Um, and, I, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. The, they've got a big hit in them, but they don't have that consistency in, in their defensive structure. Yeah, I mean, we've said it time and time again. It's it's the last 20 as well. I think they, they had one game. It might have been against the Crusaders where it was the closest to an 80-minute performance we'd seen from them. Um, but their story of the season has been that last 20. Um, yeah, I think, I think you've hit the nail on the head with the with the physicality battle. The, the Rebels, particularly playing at home in Mount Smart Stadium, um, if the Moana get kind of a roll on, get some momentum, get their tails up, um, which just comes from winning a few big hits, getting the full stadium around them with the kills, you know, um, <laughs> like they'll get a, they'll, it'd be really hard to kind of stop them. So um, if, if the Rebels have ever needed to really bring that line game and physicality from the start, it'll be in this one. Um I agree. I just don't think, even coming off a bye, I don't see, you know, it is really going to depend who goes into halftime ahead in this game out of the two teams, but Moana will need to be ahead at halftime, I think, to, to win this game. Um, whereas, if, you know, yeah. Yeah, no, I think if, if Moana don't have a bit of a buffer at mm-hmm. halftime, it's going to be tough. I, I think it'll be tough for them to hold it throughout the back end of this match. So that, that Rebel side last week, yes, they fell away, but they are starting to build some some real cohesion and some real heart in each other. Um, and no, I mean, they haven't had a very successful year to date, but they're, they're definitely on, on, on the up. Um, and they will be targeting this match um, and, and expect not to just run away with, with a win in this match. So I, I think they're going to want more from this. And I'm not saying they'll get it, but they'll be targeting a, a statement match here. Um, yeah. Moana, mate, it, the, their game plan is simple. Give the board the Tava Tava Nawai running at Monty Yuani as much as you can. Monty Yuani <laughs> looks so disinterested in defence. Uh, I think last week we saw him put on his first hit and you went, geez, was that Monty? Because yeah. the rest of the year, he's the guy that kind of goes and steps back a little bit in D and go, you got him. And, like, literally, I'm sure that voice goes over my head. Every single time I see him trying to make a tackle, he just goes, you got him, and he's just not interested in getting involved. Not interested in getting involved in a breakdown. Not interested in in helping a teammate out and tackle. So mm. I would just be putting the pressure on him early in the match, 
so that he doesn't start to get a little bit of confidence like he did last week and come out and put a shot on. Yeah. It won't be hard to, to stop his involvement at all in D just by running over him. He will go quiet. That's it for sure. Um, I'm not that's... saying hmm. I want that to happen. Moana, don't, don't listen. I, I... <laughs> Please don't do that. The, the only thing uh, that I think will be interesting here will be um, is Christian Liliafano back uh, to kind of just shore up the, the ship a little bit. I mean, I really love Lincoln McClutchy. Uh, I think he's a really exciting player, but I think the season, the veteran, the season head, the calm head of um, Liliafano just really adds a, a dimension that that uh, Moana team needs, just it adds a calm. But uh, look, for the Rebels, I think the big question is if, um, if Stacey Ely doesn't return from concussion, um, I just hope that they don't throw Kellaway into 13, Hodge at 12, um, which I feel like is what they, they'll want to do. Um, but I just think Kellaway out at fullback was has been fantastic the last uh, two weeks. Um, and I think he's much, much better there. And I'd like to see um, either, you know, Hodge in at 13 and bring in David Fellowai uh, in at 12. I thought he was awesome. Or otherwise, Lucas Ripley at 13, um, if, if there's no Stacey Ely. I just think those guys have been definitely good enough. Um, and Kellaway is by far their best choice at 15. Uh, is that how and, you um, see it going? Yeah, 99%. Um, I'm just going to say 99% because everyone says 100% and it uh, doesn't have any feeling about it. 99%, mate. I, I agree almost 100%. Um, no, look, Kellaway should be uh, at fullback. Um, to me, it's it's the way forward for them as well. They're, they're looking for a centre partner. Um, or, or some centres, because next year they're not going to have a Reese Hodge. So they need to have someone filling the centres, because if they have Hodge and Kellaway there, and next year you've got two new blokes, that's that's it, not, a, not a really good I thing. I think next, next year it'll just be Taniela Tupo or Pony. They'll chuck out in the centres, you know what I mean? That's fine. Mate, I, I don't hate it. Um, but, yeah, look, Ripley, you know, I, I, I like him. He's quite, quite a good young player. But David... Uh, the Romanian rumbler. <laughs> that's uh, really why. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's his actual nickname, but it's just too good to, to not call him it. Yeah. Um, he's He was good, so I, I hope we see him have a crack. Absolutely. Um, in terms of the tie five, look, I think um, both like Canham and Hosea were really were massive last week. I thought they were both really, really good. Canham really particularly so had, had impressed me, but they got through a lot of work. Um, we're doing really well at the set piece. Um, they've, they've got plenty of good um, front rowers you know, up, up front, so... I think they'll the rebels should have you know the advantage in the set pace and everything up front. Um, it'll just be about laying a good you know get, getting some good front football to unleash their backs. You know Carter Gordon has shown that he he will run the ball at the line and he's um, been making playing some really good footy, just making good decisions um, and really with that attacking mindset. So yeah, it'll just be about fronting up physically um winning winning that collision at the breakdown and just really trying to go after the set piece um and play in the right areas of the field for rebels i mean i, I think i just said all the cliches of what to do this game but it'll just be hard. it'll literally just be don't let moana get their tails up and you know try to put enough pressure on them to make some stupid mistakes and and test their discipline so that's yep. that's what i see for the rebels you got any last points on the rebs nah that's it mate uh, do you want me to put my tip in or are you going to put it in first yeah, I'll go first on this one. Look, I see the Rebels winning back in the back in the Aussie boys. Um, nice. Yeah, I really, really want to switch my, hurric- my Hurricanes and Brumbies back now, but uh, back three Aussie teams. Um, uh, yeah, Rebels winning this one. I'm going to say by, again, again, I actually feel maybe not as comfortably. I'm going to go by 14. Nice. I was thinking it, this could go the way of Moana or the, the Rebels could run away with it. Mm. Um these two teams haven't been consistent. I think the the Rebels probably have been finding a little bit more consistency despite not getting the wins. So I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to say probably around that double-digit mark, 9, 10, 11. I'm going to say 10. 10, very good. 